Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to share with you one of my biggest screw-ups. Look how wonderfully framed this green heron is. I don't even remember what I was thinking when I framed up this image. It would have been a great image if I had that bird a little bit more towards the center of the frame. But I still like the shot. So I probably want to crop it significantly. But actually, this was taken several years ago with a Nikon D7000. You can see the resolution here. Um, that was a 16.2 megapixel camera. So I'm going to have to crop away at least half of those pixels to make this look halfway decent. And then if I want to print it, probably the best I could get out of it maybe is a 5x7, maybe an 8x10. I won't be able to be, uh, get a decent print of anything larger than that. So that's where Gigapixel hopefully will rescue me. But my screw up goes beyond that. Let me give you a before shot. There's before. You could see I also totally screwed up the exposure of the image. Um, it was shot at an ISO of 200. But because I had it so horribly underexposed, if I zoom in, you could see that there's a ton of noise. So I need to use Denoise AI to reduce that noise. And then hopefully it looks halfway decent from that point. And then I could crop it and send it to Gigapixel. Now, as you can see, I am in Lightroom and I did some processing of this raw file in Lightroom, but not a lot. Um, in the basic tab, I did add 1.4 stops of exposure. I did highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. I didn't do any presence um, adjustments except for vibrance and saturation. And to tell you the truth, I didn't need to do that either. But I could have done that later. But it has been my experience that if I add texture and clarity now, because this image could use a little clarity, maybe a little texture. If I did it now, it's a little more difficult for denoise to remove the noise. And it really doesn't matter whether you add texture and clarity to the raw file or to a TIFF file or to a PSD file. It is just as effective on any of those types of images. So there's no need to do it yet. We'll do it after I send the image to um, Denoise AI, maybe even after Gigapixel. But I did add some vibrance and saturation. It didn't need to haze at all. Um, the only other thing I did is in the detail tab, I made sure sharpening was at zero. Luminance noise reduction is at zero because I'm going to use denoise. But color noise reduction, I left at the default value of 25. I found the color noise reduction in Lightroom does work very well. And you usually don't have to push it anywhere past 25 to get it to work. Even on this image that has a ton of noise. Now, you may be tempted to crop the image right now, then send it to Denoise. But as I alluded, Denoise works best when it has as many pixels to look at as possible. So I want to send the full resolution image, all 16.2 megapixels of it, to Denoise so Denoise could remove the noise. Then after it comes back to, from Denoise, I'll do the cropping. So I'm going to send it to Denoise right now. I'm going to right click right on the image. I'm going to go down to Edit In and then down to Denoise AI right there. And um, I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. It is a raw file, so that's the only active choice at the top. Uh, TIFF Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits per component. Resolution of 360, I mention this all the time. I use Epson printers, and Epson recommends that you use a resolution of 360 throughout your workflow uh, if you plan on printing the image with their printer. So that's what I do, compression none, click edit. Now you can see on the top left hand corner, there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating a TIFF file with those specifications. And then it's going to open the image up into Denoise AI. Now I have Denoise AI uh, set up so that we're looking at the four panel view. If you go up here to view, you could see that there's single view, split view, side by side, and comparison view. That's the four panel view that I mentioned. I prefer that because there's three different modes of noise reduction available in Denoise AI. And with this four panel view, I could look at all of them at the same time. Now what I want to do is I'm probably going to crop it from the top left hand corner. So the stuff over in the top left hand corner that we're viewing probably isn't applicable. It's not going to be in the final image. So I'm going to move it more this way. Like maybe more like that. 
see what that looks like. Now it has to re-render whenever you move the um, preview box over there. So let's just look and see what we have. Now as far as Denoise AI, I have it set to auto and it did a really pretty nice job, I would say. Um, AI clear mode did a really nice job as well. As a matter of fact, it might have done a better job. Um, low light mode, that did a great job as well. And I think in all three of them, I probably have it set to auto settings. Um, actually, I see a little noise in the feathers of the bird here in AI clear mode. And I actually do see a little noise in here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stay with the noise AI. And we're going to boost the noise up a little more. Let's say around 35. It's going to re-render. But we'll have to take a look. And actually, it seemed to have cleared up most of that noise in there. Now, I could uh, zoom in a little more if I need to. Um, I could go to 200. And let's reposition it right around there. And to get a better look at it and see what we're dealing with. And I could see there's still a tiny bit of noise in these feathers uh, right here. Now I'm being a little nitpicky, and you can see that I, AI clear, there's a significant amount more noise in those same feathers. And low light actually looks pretty good, although the, the um, resolution isn't as good. It doesn't look as uh, resolute as, uh, as Denoise AI. So we're going to stay with Denoise AI, and I'm going to push the noise up a little more. Let's try to uh, 50. Let's go right to 50. When I let go, it's going to have to re-render. And actually, that looks very good. So I'm going to go with the uh, Denoise AI mode. To make sure you're using the quick mode or you're applying the right mode, make sure that's active over here. So Denoise AI is the active mode, and you'll see that I have a little box around it uh, right here in the lower left-hand corner. So that's the active mode. That's what we're using. I'll click Apply. Now you'll see that there's a progress bar in the top and it gives a time and percentage. And once that's done, uh, getting the noise applied to it, it will reopen up into Lightroom and then we'll compare it to the original image and then I'll do my crop. Okay, so here we are here. I'm gonna bring up the film strip by hitting the F6 key on my keyboard. And um, what I'll do is I'm gonna hold the Commander control key and it's command on my Mac, control on a PC, and then I could like zoom in to a specific area. Okay, this is the uh, denoise mode right here. We're gonna go up to view and I'm gonna go down to lock zoom position so that I could click on the other image that has the noise and it stays in the same spot. And you can see there is a considerable amount of noise and denoise AI clean that up like beautifully. Now I'm gonna do the crop. Now I could come in and do texture and clarity and maybe sharpening as well. But Gigapixel does kind of some noise reduction and artifact, re artifact removal. So I'm gonna hold off on that. Um, we'll just let Gigapixel do its thing. Like I mentioned, you could add texture and clarity even to haze anytime. It doesn't work any better on a RAW file or a TIFF file or a PSD. It works equally well on any of those types of files. So I'm gonna go to the crop tool. I'm going to make sure the padlock is locked because I want to keep the original 2 to 3 aspect ratio. I'm going to pull down from the left-hand corner. So we're going to really crop away at least half of these pixels. Maybe right there I'm going to have the bird looking off uh, to the right. Let's make it so that that rule of thirds is right over the bird's eye uh, right there. So it's looking off into the open part of the image. I'm going to commit to the crop. I'm just going to close the crop tool. So there's our crop. Now, if I hit the I key a couple times over here, you'll see that it's now 3158 by 2091. So I, I did crop away a significant number of pixels. If I want to print this, it probably wouldn't be able to get much larger than 8 by 10. So I need to send it to Gigapixel to blow it up. So I'm going to go right click right on it. I'm going to go down to Edit In, and I'm going to go down to Gigapixel AI. Now, again, uh, it's asking us. And we have, because it's not a raw file, I could edit a copy and edit original, but we need to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments because we did a Lightroom adjustment, we cropped it. And I'm keeping these same settings that I used for Denoise AI for the copy file options, and I'll click edit. Now it's, again, you can see the progress bar on the top left-hand corner, it's creating this uh, TIFF file and opening it up into Gigapixel AI. Now I'm gonna 
move the area of focus by taking this little square and putting it over the green heron's head mainly. And we'll let it do its thing. It's going to have to render or re-render. We'll update preview. There we go. I don't know why it's doing this. There we go. That's better. Let it render and see what we got. Now I'm going to go with a 2x um, blow up. So that will get me um, from 3158 by 2092 to 6316 by 4184. I think that's good enough. And um, at 2x, um, let's put it to auto mode and just see. I apparently didn't use auto mode last time, whatever image I had in here. But let's just put it in auto mode, let it render, and see what it looks like. And you can see that it uh, significantly sharpened the image. You can see if you look around the bird's eye and feather area, it looks like it's significantly sharpened. Uh, we're in standard mode. Those of you not familiar with Gigapixel AI, it has different modes. It has architectural mode that, of course, is meant for buildings. Although, at times, it may work fine for a landscape. You could try it out. Here, not so much. It has a compressed mode. This is meant for compressed images. Those usually are JPEGs because JPEGs are compressed. So if you're blowing up a JPEG, you may want to use a compressed image. And then art. This is something that you either uh, drew yourself and scanned or something you created digitally like on an iPad or a tablet and um, you need to blow it up. That's meant for art. Um, obviously with this image, it seemed that the standard mode worked best. Um, suppress noise, I used auto, and remove blur. Those settings look pretty good. So it looks pretty good. It did sharpen it considerably. That's why I didn't add texture, clarity, or uh, detail sharpening in Lightroom because Gigapixel does do that. So it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go over here and just click Apply, and you'll see a progress bar come up. Now Gigapixel takes a little longer to render than Denoise AI. Oh, it's making a liar out of me. Oh, no, it's starting over, processing 1%. There we go. So it is going to take a little longer. So I'll pause the video. When it reopens up in Lightroom, uh, we'll rejoin each other and um, take a look at it. All right, we're back uh, from Gigapixel. We're in Lightroom. This is the full resolution, noise reduced image, 6,316 pixels by 4,184. I could probably print easily a 16 by 24 with this now. And you could see, I think it looks great. I could go over to the basic tab. Um, I could add a little texture, maybe, maybe a little clarity. Go down to detail, even add some sharpening now if I wanted to. That's over sharpening it. But you get the idea here. We could go crazy. So, and I'd finish it off with a, with a little bit of a vignette. So there's our finished image. Now there... Go back again. This is the image that we reduce noise, but it's only at 3,158 by 2,091. And here, of course, is my original image. So I rescued this image and made it look halfway decent using Denoise AI and Gigapixel AI by Topaz Labs. By the way, in the description below this video, I'll have links to those products. I have a discount code available. Uh, you could save, I think, 15% off the price of the uh, products from Topaz Labs. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.